Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now, today's pattern is number 36 in the Great Smoky Mountain series. This one is called the Early Nelson. Now, this is kind of one of those forgotten flies. You won't find much information at all out there on it. I mean, I got the pattern from Don Kirk's Hatches and Fly Patterns of the Great Smoky Mountains. I only saw one other reference to it out there. But what Don Kirk says is this fly has been around in the Smoky Mountain region since before World War II. Cap Weiss used it. You remember we've talked about Cap Weiss. He was from Lenore. He was a school headmaster, a well-educated and pretty well-traveled guy. So we know he was using it back before World War II. And we think he probably brought it down from the Catskills because it was up there as early as the 1840s. Now, like a lot of Catskill flies, they probably came over from England. So in the mid 1840s or so, it was in New England, the Catskill region, and somebody, you know, eventually brought it down to the Smoky Mountains. And we think that somebody was probably Cap Weiss. So how did it get to the Catskills? What do we know about it in England? Not a whole lot else. It was probably named after Lord Nelson of the British Admiral fame. He was well known to be a fly fisherman, but that's really just conjecture. I mean, why do they call it early? Why not just call it the Lord Nelson or the Admiral Nelson? I have no idea. Nobody really knows, but it's a pretty cool pattern. If you look at it, it looks a little bit like a Thunderhead, a little bit like an Adams, but it's got a peacock curl body. So how could a fly with all these cool traits not be popular? I really don't know. So. I'm tying up some tonight. I'm gonna to use them here in Maryland tomorrow. I'll let you know how it goes. I think you'll like it. Let's give it a shot. So there you go in the vise. This is a size 12. It's a standard length dry fly hook. It looks almost stubby, but it's because a lot of the flies we tie on dry, or a lot of the dry flies we tie are on 1X or 2X long. And this is just a standard length, but you really wouldn't wanna tie this one on anything bigger than this because it is a pretty stubby fly. So I'm gonna put down a base, a black thread. This is 70 denier UTC. Now our options for the tail. The only recipe of this one I see calls for black bear hair. So this is a patch of black bear hair. If you don't have this, your next best bet would be oh, moose body hair, which is black and pretty stiff also. And if you don't have moose body hair, just use some deer hair. It, it will work. Just use black if you've got it. So I put this in my stacker. We'll see, bear hair doesn't stack all that well all the time, but let's see. That gave us a, a pretty, pretty straight tip. So let's put this on and see how it looks. Now, I think that's gonna be fine right there. And, and it's a fairly long tail maybe a, a whole body length, a little bit longer than a hook gap. So let's catch this in with a couple wraps and then take a look at our position and see what we think. That's a little short, so let's back it off. And it might be a little bit thick too, so I wanna pull a few of these fibers out. Thin it out maybe by half. Okay, let's see how that looks. And go about, let's try it about right there. A couple of medium wraps right there. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. Just don't let it spin around on you. So pull it back on top before I put a couple of tighter wraps. And just like deer hair, if it does spin around too much on you, just, just lift it up and throw a loop right up under it. And that will kinda Kind of prop it back up a little bit. Okay, now I am going to leave this in, just help beef up the underbody because we're just doing peacock curl for the body. So just catch this in all the way up to the front of the body. Okay, I think that's far enough right there. Now snip off this excess bare hair. Now we're gonna do the wings. We're gonna post two grizzly tips upright. Now you could have done this before the tail, but when I'm doing stand-up wings, I like to do the tail first. That way the wings just don't really get in your way. So see these right here, and don't worry how they're oriented. We'll split them in a minute, and you know, after we stand them upright. So take a couple 
of wraps. Don't lock it down yet. Now just flip them up and see if, if they're the height you want. And I think that is about the height I'm gonna want. So put a couple of securing wraps back here. Now we can snip off this, the butt ends of these grizzly tips. And just catch that in a little bit. Now take our thread back up behind them. Let's pull them up and put our wraps, just enough wraps in front to stand them upright. Shouldn't take too many, four or five might do it. Okay, they're sticking up right now. And, you know, you're gonna have some of those scragglies, but you don't necessarily have to worry about that because we've got a lot of hackle. This is a Smoky Mountain brown and grizzly hackled fly. So if you've watched any of my Smoky Mountain dry fly pattern videos, you know they are pretty heavily hackled. So there's one figure eight X wrap. Now let's do one more. And let's see, make sure they're not going too crazy. Whoops, that one's going a little bit crazy on me there. So let's put that one back. Okay, I think that is a decent position right there. Now we can always orient the wings when we are wrapping the hackle, but I don't like this right here sticking forward. So I'm gonna go in here and just try to clean this up before I, you know, it will get a little bit in the way when we're doing the hackle later. So now's a good chance, a good time to clean it up if you need to. Okay, so there's our wings. Now let's take our thread, just back behind the wings, not too far, because we're gonna tie in this peacock curl. Two strands, two strands of peacock curl. Now if you could orient it with the short side toward the hook, it might make wrapping it a little easier, but I don't worry too much about that. And one of them already broke. So when that happens, just catch it in again. And I, I snipped off a little bit of these, so this shouldn't be too brittle. When you're working with peacock curl, you might want to always snip off the first inch or so, because it's that's the really brittle stuff. So I've got them caught into the back, and I'm gonna leave my thread about halfway, and I'll show you why here, because when we start wrapping this, that thread will help keep these peacock curls together. So just touching turns, one right in front of the other, it's not a real thick body, but it's okay if you do make it thick. Just don't want to make it too heavy. It's a, it's a dry fly, but with all the hackle we're going to put on it, it's probably going to float pretty much no matter how much peacock curl we put on the body here. See how that thread is keeping my two peacock curl strands together? I think that's probably enough body right there. We'll go one more and then catch this off. So we're gonna put the hackle on two or three wraps behind the wings and then at least two in front as well. Okay, so that's gonna be fine right there. Just yeah, fix those wings if you need to. Got any scraggly? fibers you can go ahead and trim them i'm not going to worry about it we'll just bury them with their hackle so like a lot of smoky mountain flies brown and grizzly and i, I cut two to match the the hook um, if anything i usually have the brown just a slight bit smaller maybe one size smaller than the grizzly I think the flies look just a little bit better if the grizzly is more prominent after you've wrapped it. So get that caught in, two or three good wraps. Now I will bend those tips out right there, or the, the butt ends, before I snip that off. And we've pushed one forward right there. Let's go ahead and take that, take care of these before we wrap this hackle. That's going to be fine. Got some scrap floating around there so wrap these whichever one you ended up tying in the front wrap that one first so this one we've got the brown so let's see what two wraps behind it is going to look like and then two wraps in front okay i think that's going to be fine 
just be careful with these wings so that you don't, you know, end up moving them around too much with your with your uh, hackle wraps. So that's two behind and two in the front. I'm gonna do one more in the front and we'll see how that's gonna look. So two wraps to catch this off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and snip off this excess brown. Now let's wrap the Grizzly. So that brown looks pretty good. It's not too full, but we're gonna certainly fill it up with this Grizzly here. So. I'm gonna to try to do the same thing, maybe zigzag these through a little bit. I'm gonna go with two wraps behind it and see how that looks. And then, oh, that one slipped. Have to start counting over. I think that might only be one full wrap behind it, but all right, let's try one more. I probably should have grabbed my hackle pliers. I don't have a whole lot of this grizzly to work with. But it's not too late to grab your hackle pliers. Okay. Now watch my wings. You see I'm pushing them a little bit forward. Let's just pull them back a little bit to get these last two wraps in front of them. Now that's already pretty, pretty bushy right there. One more might make it too heavily hackled. So I'm gonna stop where I am. So just do that when your time flies. Don't follow a recipe blindly if it says, oh, three wraps ahead, three wraps behind. Um, if you need to stop halfway or, and adjust as you go, just do it. Nobody's gonna come yell at you. Fly time police are not gonna catch up with you and say, whoa, you wrapped that one too few times. So I haven't snipped off this excess yet. I'm gonna try, try to pull these back. I keep poking myself with that hook, but okay, got them all back and now I can build my head. And it's not a big head, it's a dry fly. You don't wanna get it too heavy, but just flat enough, make enough room where we can put our whip finish. I think that's enough right there. Now let's work our whip finish tool in here. Try not to trap too many of these fibers. There's four turns, I think that's gonna work. Snip our thread. And then we've got this excess feather right here. So reach in here as close as you can, snip that off. If you've got any cleanup, now's the time to do it. Some of these right here should be a little bit forward, but this is a decent fishable fly, the early Nelson, Smoky Mountain pattern. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time.